I am currently sitting outside under a shady tree. It's the day of the solstice. I am just happy to be here. I hope you're having a good week. And if you're not, I hope that this conversation feeds your soul and helps you elevate that. I wanted to talk about and have a conversation dedicated to what I refer to as soul food. Those things that we do and take in that feed our soul, that inspire us, that uplift us, that give us the energy to keep going, keep creating, keep elevating our experience and really keep us nourished on a deeper, more intangible, yet equally important level. Like I said in our last conversation, getting out of a funk, I have been in a funk. And one thing that I recognize when I, you know, go through those waves is that I've recently been starved of those things that feed my soul, that I do on a, you know, habitual level. Not completely, but certainly enough to feel that they're missing and know that my well-being suffers because of that, Uh, because I haven't engaged with what gives me that energy and what feeds me in that way nearly as much as I usually do. And I think that's such an important element to highlight of this conversation. And we've talked about this before, probably I think in our conversation on vision boards. I take everything in as inspiration or not, but that's usually what I'm taking from all that I witness and see it can be the way the final bit of golden sun hits the top of the trees before it sets. It can be a floor, words, images, a book, clothing, film, art, comedy, architecture, wisdom, deep conversation with someone that you love and you trust and you can be fully open with whatever those things are. And I might have some idea in the moment of what that inspiration is giving to me or what it's related to or how I'm going to incorporate it in something, or I might not. And that's always fun because in that moment you take in that inspiration and then a week, a month, three years down the line, it fits and it makes sense. And then you're so grateful that you wrote it down or you took that picture or whatever because it can all be part of it. And that's, you know, that's what I love. They are perhaps part of our human experience that, like I said, intangible, ineffable, but it, they're just so essential to our well-being and to our evolution. And everyone has different things that inspire them, that uplift them, and that feed their soul. So the first question is, do you know what yours are? I love to keep a running list of soul food in whatever notebook I'm using and add to it and have that because then again like we talked about in getting out of a funk when you have that list there it's so easy to look at it and call upon those things when you feel you need them when you feel they're missing there's a great quote that I love it goes You often feel tired, not because you've done too much, but because you've done too little of what sparks a light in you. That is 100% 
exactly what we're talking about here. The things that spark a light in you that are so essential to our well-being, those are the things we have to hold on to, that we have to make time and space for as much as we can. And if you're not sure what feeds your soul, what those soul foods are, then maybe this is the perfect season in your life to find out, to go discover. There's so much fun and joy in the exploration and finding those things that set you on fire, that sets your soul on fire, that sparks that light within you, that inspiration and hope and optimism and emotion and openness within. Think about those things that you take in that make you feel a special type of way and try to make more time for them. Do them more. If you love listening to podcasts like this, make sure that you listen to them. Explore similar types of things in this space. If you love learning and talking about well-being and evolution, dive deeper into it. And sign up for the Reself waitlist so that you get our pre-launch preview and you can really dive deeper into it. <laughs> but, you know, for real, great example of that, right? If you have been on board and you're like, but I don't have more time. Okay, here's a really easy one. Ready? Look how much time you're spending on your phone. Look, just look at your screen time and then figure out what is taking up time? If you're spending an hour a day on Instagram, there's an hour a day that you could get back. We've said it multiple times and we'll continue to say it, right? Our time is the only thing we never get back. So use it to feed your soul. Use it to elevate yourself. I mean, you tell me, but for me, an hour a day on Instagram doesn't even come close to spending an hour, to spending 30 minutes, even 15 minutes doing something that's on my list of soul food. If you want to use your phone less, swap that time with engaging with something that's on your list of soul food. And really, truly, write that list down. Because then whenever you feel bored, like you have nothing to do, you feel lonely, you feel, you know, drained, whatever, you can immediately go to that list and pick something off of that that resonates with what you feel aligned with doing, capable of doing in this moment, and you can do it and you can immediately feed yourself, nourish yourself, and uplift yourself in that moment. So again, podcasts, right? Say I've had a shitty day, I'm feeling down in the dumps, la la la, I go look at my list of soul food and now I see that, okay, podcasts. I haven't listened to like a good solid podcast in a while or I feel like I could maybe find something else and I go and I do that and I sit and I listen. Maybe I take some notes and I feel elevated. I feel smarter, wiser, you know? You have a list of things you do and engage with that will surely spark something within your soul. You know, I was just talking to someone and we were just talking about how it's so easy to get unmotivated and to fall into inertia and to be down in the dumps. And it takes so much courage and work and energy to continually uplift yourself, feed your well-being, evolve. But that, I believe, is really where it's at because then the work doesn't feel like work. You just get such a deeper sense of fulfillment because you know what you're doing matters. You know what you're doing is making a difference. You can feel that and that's so powerful. And obviously it goes beyond yourself, right? But unless we fill up our own cups first. We're pouring from an empty cup. We're pouring from a cup that has a finite source. Whereas if we have established this practice of continual renewal 
and energizing and feeding our souls and la 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 and taking care of our well-being and evolving as a person and healing and everything then you know, the you know, river can flow and we can give more and bring more to the table there were a few quotes and graphics and stuff that i pulled from my archives for this conversation that i thought were appropriate that I wanted to touch on and talk about. One of them was search for soul in everything. I love that. I mean, obviously, right, I saved it. I okay. threw it in the archives. It's been on my mood boards before. To me, that really means there is something in everything that we can recognize as being connected to as being a part of ourselves that part that is within me is in my dog is in the tree is in this piece of art is in this person that seems so separate from me that seems so easy for me to hate and yet i know that we are inherently interconnected and one that we share something with and i think that in that same sense the more that we open ourselves up to the importance of feeding our souls, feeding that ineffable, intangible, and yet essential part of ourselves and our well-being and our experience, the more everything benefits from it, the more our own understanding and exploration and meeting of ourselves in our entirety, the more we can better show up in our relationships with the people that we meet and interact with on a daily basis. And it's just a really positive chain reaction. Whereas I think also, you know, the contrast of it, moving through life without it, you know, being more uh, mindless instead of mindful um, about what we take in, I think that can be detrimental to our well-being and experience and evolution. Everything gets processed by our subconscious. And in this season of my life, you know, as I've thought about this for a few years, I don't know if you can ever be too cautious about what you take in because you're taking it all in, whether you know it or not. So, you know, I think the more mindful we can be, or at least the more energy we put into that which positively feeds us and try to eliminate that which antagonizes us or has a negative impact on us, the better off we are, right? Obviously, I think. The next quote is from a terrific movie, which 10 out of 10 would recommend if you haven't seen. Dead Poets Society, and in it, Robin Williams' character is telling the boys he's teaching poetry to medicine, law, business, engineering. These are noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life, but poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for. I think it's the same thing with that which feeds your soul and that which feeds my soul. There are elements of our experience that are necessary to sustain life, but what feeds your soul is what feeds your will and your drive and your appreciation of life and the beauty in it, even though it can be so difficult and harsh there are things in it i.e your soul food that takes away the harsh edges that rounds and softens and keeps you open when you want to close and shrink and be hard and on that note <laughs> Here is a quote from Kurt Vonnegut. Go into the arts. 
I'm not kidding. The arts are not a way to make a living. They are a very human way of making life more bearable. Practicing an art, no matter how well or how badly, is a way to make your soul grow, for heaven's sake. Sing in the shower, dance to the radio, tell stories, write a poem to a friend, even a lousy poem. Do it as well as you possibly can. You will get an enormous reward. You will have created something. Part of, for me, my soul food is my painting, my photography, my artistic expression. Dancing to music whenever I can. Dancing around in the morning. Making playlists. Enjoying that. Things that make me feel alive. My writing. Even this podcast I consider to be part of my soul food because it brings me so much joy and fulfillment and it doesn't matter what happens after I've created it right that's beyond me I've done my part and I wanted to share that quote because it doesn't matter as long as you do it as well as you can keep doing it you'll get better at it you know that's not the point the point is you have created something you've done something that is enormously rewarding and that makes life more bearable more fulfilling that's i mean that's pretty much it i don't have much more to say on this topic because i feel like it's pretty pretty self-explanatory and yet something that's so essential to put in here because like i said it's really easy to not do these things it's really easy to fall into the mundane but it's up to us to keep our lives as exciting and fulfilling and meaningful as possible that's all up to us oh there was another quote that i wanted to share i have to see if i can find it I'm not quite sure if this is it. It's something that I found on Tumblr years ago, and I'm pretty sure I saved, but I, I could spend hours <laughs> looking in the archives for this. So uh, what I found was, in, in trying to Google it and find it, you've got to start romanticizing your life. you got to start believing that your morning commute is cute and fun, that every cup of coffee is the best you've ever had, that even the smallest and most mundane things are exciting and new. You have to because that's when you start truly living. That is when you look forward to every day. And I love that idea because I think that can it reach the point of delusion? Absolutely. <laughs> but I think that there's a beautiful balance in that, which is to say, it is up to you what is mundane and what is beautifully incredible about life. And it's all about a matter of perception. It's not what you're looking at, but what you see, right? The more that we feed that with what feeds our soul, like I said, the more everything benefits from that. The more we start to truly live, the more we start to truly feel what is alive inside of us, what we live for and I, I think it's that deep I mean I think if everything is deep right but I, I truly think it's that deep because that's how you start looking forward to everything that's how you feel energized I was also just talking to someone about green lights by Matthew McConaughey in it you know all this stuff will be linked down below in it in the book he talks about the only thing that he has to be cool with at the end of the day is, like, himself. You know, it's his head on the pillow, and that's it. And in that sense, this idea of uh, being tired from what you love, right? Like, you know those days where you've just had a day full of doing what you love, right? Those things that feed your soul, and you hit the pillow, and you're just exhausted in a like beautiful way a fulfilling way and you just sleep great after that i'm not saying every day has to be like that but we can do what we can to put those things into our day that 
give us that same feeling. You know what I mean? So on that note, go forth, find your soul food, write down your list of soul food. Think about what is it that I do that feeds my soul? How can I do more of it? How can I make more time and space for it? What do I need to do less of to do that? And Godspeed. (laughs) I hope everyone has a beautiful week filled with soul food. I know, like I said, I've been in a funk. I'm going to write down my list of soul food and I'm going to start figuring out how to reincorporate it all back into my life. I mean, you know, another thing is, right? I was thinking about this recently. You know, it's not winter here anymore. So I spend a lot of time outside. And in the winter, I do a lot of my painting and art and stuff so it's also like a continual process of adjustment and figuring out what works in this season of your life and you know what else I could just bring my painting outside and take in the sun and paint at the same time you know what I mean so it's really all about you know also being flexible and yeah make sure you signed up for the reself wait list make sure you're following us on instagram pinterest tumblr whatever floats your boat Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for chatting with me. Have a beautiful week. Bye, everybody.